Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name's Keith and I'm your host. Come on in. Let's see what our next video is all about. Okay, we're down to uh, three inches twenty-eight and three inches twenty-seven and a half or so. It's got a little bit of taper in it, but it's um, it's basically uh, a skim cut or two above uh, finished diameter, and we got good um, um, looks on our uh, no undercuts on the outsides here. We're pretty well set up. We have this spinning right now and it's running about oh maybe one and a half or two right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and I see I'm gonna call it one and a half that's the high okay and And there's two and that's the high all right so those highs are in line with each other so I can go ahead and shift this over with the truck and dialing that in and get it in close enough to where both of them are within about a half a thousandth of each other running this way here but here's here's the thing let me pull you off of the all right, we're set up in the steady rest over here, and I I just put an indicator over there, and she's running uh, within about one two thousandths over there on that indicator as well, and that's we didn't run the shaft at all before uh, on the rollers before we started the job because we know that welding distorts and moves and makes it go all over the place. The last roller is not touching, so we're on this roller here, the chuck and that roller. I'm going to go ahead and undo the chuck now, and we're going to read the run out. Right here. So we'll undo the chuck. Back the jaws all out. And then we'll be able to roll the shaft on the stands, <clears throat> or the two sets of rollers we have, and that will be just like doing a total indicator readout of this area right now well, we got about ten thousands run out the high is pretty close to our marking of that high And of course we got pipe wrench marks and everything else like that all right so we need to go ahead and do a little heat straightening on this right here now I'm gonna I'm gonna roll this around here it does make a difference going in one direction and the other direction but the roller stands out there are pretty loose and we're on the side here. If we got a vertical, we got a vertical readout here. It's probably going to be a better. That way, we're not worried about side to side. We know there's less movement up and down. Okay, at least that's steady. Either direction, we're getting the same reading. Okay. So that's our high right there. And we said that was about 10. Let's go down to our low here. Okay. There's zero. Okay, it's not quite 10. It's like eight. All right. We're gonna do a little heat straightening right here in the in the lathe 
uh, to get this running true. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this on the carriage so that we can check vertically over here as well. But we're going to mark this right here. And that's going to be 8. When we were holding in Chuck, we had the high over there and it was matching. So we're going to see if free rolling on the rollers, what it's reading on this side of the well. Both of these have to be running concentric to each other to machine this surface so that it blends in with the outside diameter. And that's the whole key of this process at the end. You got to have it running true. To only have eight thousands run out after all that welding, it's because I follow my procedure. Zero and ten. That that ten's in line with that eight. Now we have the mag base on our compound for our tracer, and it makes a pretty good hole because now we can go back and forth and we can check exactly what we have there and what we have here. See, I went to eight. It does dip just a little bit below zero there. It might be closer to being nine. All right. I think we're gonna do our heat straightening right in this area right here. We're going to bring this shaft running within two thousandths. And then we should be able to skim this with no, no issues. Okay, we've got a little plastic dam in here. And we've got this set up here. And we're on the high spot right now. And we're going to heat a spot right here and cool it on down. And see if we can get this thing to run pretty straight and true. Uh, first off, I want to change my my tip here. I forgot I had this big one on. Heat straightening doesn't always take a big tip. Sometimes it's the finesse of just a little heat. See how fast it moves, how much you're going to need to hold it. We're equally tightened all the way around. We're probably bouncing about a half a thousand there, but there's a lot of neural by pipe wrench marks right here. <laughs> or channel locks, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so we're going to say that we're running zero there now. Now let's go ahead and come on over here to this side here. And that looks like it's about a half a thousand. Okay, now we're close enough to skim this surface and blend it into these two diameters here. We know that this is one or two under just because of this amount of wear that's been in here. But, and this is this diameter up here. 
is closer to true shaft diameter but we're going to blend that in and it'll have a nice surface for new packing to seal properly on the shaft just just for everybody's going to everybody's going to want to ask okay this now is running out that three or four thousands that we originally had on these two surfaces before we released it from the chuck all right and over here same same about three thousandths and if we would have machined it without straightening it we would have had that problem of having that amount of run out blending with these two surfaces right here now we won't have any issue at all okay a little cutting oil All right, we're just gonna touch on here. Okay, and we're just gonna take like eight thousandths. You don't have to rush right in there and take the whole amount. It's better to stink, but it's also better to have it consistent right now we know we're lobing about three thousands or so so let's go ahead and remove it and come down to a diameter that we can take the micrometers and measure and make our best judgment coming in to the next cut Okay, that's like two, two and a half or so. And this is reading about the same thing right here. So I can't really feel, I see the color there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna polish it in from there. Okay, I'm just taking a plain scotch bright and I'm blending the coloring here and here. Okay, now we're going to polish it with some strip emery.
Okay, now that we've got that pretty well smoothed out, You can see our spot where we heated it. There's our new seal area. I'm almost all two thousandths on there. So I actually kind of took this and then kind of faded out just a little bit by hand and then carried that to the largest diameter all the way. I want to give it the most as I can, right? So I'm totally happy with that surface. We're ready to pull this out, put the shaft on the rollers on the ground, do the check straightening on the rest of the shaft, turn it around, get it back in the lathe, and then start fitting and then do a fitting face on our coupling we're making. Mm -hmm. 